Hi there, Lori here. I'm going to show you how to use the Anna Aspness Designs templates to do some really cool things in Artisan 5. You can use them in Artisan 4 also, but the cool pieces, these masky sort of pieces, um, won't feel exactly the same way and you need to play a little bit differently. There are some instructions on the templates on how to do that with Artisan 4. But Artisan 5 has some cool new effects and we're going to use those. I've already pulled over photos and some papers that I'm going to use from a gorgeous kit by Anna. And this is Art, Pal uh, uh, Art Play Swell. So there's a lot of beachy theme things here. I love it. It's gorgeous. First of all, I'm just going to fill this masked area. And I can do that one of two ways. I'm going to show you both of those. To begin with, if I do a right mouse and effects and edit, I can add an effect and I have two different things that I can do with this. I can do a blend layer or a mask layer. So I'm going to show you each one of those. Let me just cancel for a moment. And to begin with, I'm going to pull over a photo so that it's sitting here because I am going to right mouse and copy that photo. And then I'm just going to slide it more out of the way. So I'll take this mask, I will say right mouse effects edit, add an effect, and for this one I'm going to insert a blend layer. Now when I do that, I get this pattern that pops up, and obviously you can see that it just fills it with a bit of a color. I'm going to go down and paste, because I grab that photo, you can see that it pastes that in. And now, because this mask layer has a lot of dark, uh, kind of a black look to it in the center, I need to change my opacity so that it looks the way it, it is um, supposed to look. You can see that doing this keeps all the texture around the edges by using the effect. I'll just go ahead and OK that for the moment so that you can see exactly how that looks. And because the mask isn't the exact same aspect ratio of that photo, it does look like we're stretched out a little bit. So to fix that, I could grab it and drag it in. And you can see that there's actually a couple of different layers here that we're looking at. And I can fill this bottom layer, if I can grab it right there, the one underneath it, I could do the exact same thing if I wanted to with a paper. Now I'm just going to come over here and right mouse copy a paper right from my Windows folder. And now I've got that selected, I can do right mouse, effects, edit, add an effect, insert a blend layer, pattern, and paste. And now it's filling it in with that paper. It's a very subtle look. And again, if I want to change the look a bit, I can change my opacity. And you can just keep kind of building up the page based on that if you like. I'll OK that. And I want to show you a different way now to fill this in. So to start with, I'm just going to undo a few times my favorite button until we get back to where it was. This time, I'm going to go over and um, bring that photo so that we can see it a little bit better on the page. This time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over here on this mask, and I'm going to right mouse copy that mask, because now I'm going to apply this mask to the photo in a different way. So I will do the right mouse effects edit on the photo itself. When I say add an effect now, I'm going to say insert a mask layer. That's going to bring this box up with mask, and I can click the drop down and say paste. And there's that mask that I had. I'm just going to OK that. And all right, here we go. See how that now picks up all that textury edge? It's slightly different than the other way that we did it. 
I'm going to change the size somewhat and then I'm just going to group it down into the right um, layer so that it sits where it needs to sit and ungroup. And you can see that now the edge has a lot more texture to it. I really like that look and you have to remember when you're doing that to select the mask first and copy it and then you're going to apply the mask effect to the photo. So you can see that this is a photo spot on a stacked frame. There's another photo spot back there. So I'm going to grab this photo right here and drag it in and it's going to fill this photo spot, but I want that same photo underneath it because a stacked photo looks really cool that way. Over here, my photo's not used, it disappeared, so I'm going to say photos already used. Actually, I can say photos on this page. That's a better choice. And here's that photo again, so I can drag that same photo and I can find where it fits and now it's right underneath and that looks really cool that way. It kind of extends that photo totally. Also another really neat thing about these particular templates is that there are custom shadows applied and you'll see that those custom shadows are locked. So if you do decide that you need to move your photo to a different area, so if I grab this photo and I want to drag that to a different place, you can see that that shadow is locked in place. So I would need to go down and unlock the shadow, and now I can grab all of this. Whoops, and I think I must have grabbed the wrong shadow. Oh, I just didn't grab enough of it. See how that shadow extends a little bit further? I didn't have all of it. So as I grab this, I'll go over and grab that shadow too and then I can move it around where I need to. Obviously, undo is my best friend, so there we go. Those are a couple of really cool things that you can do when you're filling this. Let me show you just one more uh, cool trick, because we do have some, um, some different textury things down here. Let's find that correct layer. You can see that this is tape, and this tape, if you just fill it with paper, right mouse, fill, if you just fill it with paper, it loses some of the textury look to it. You don't see it as well anymore. So don't forget that you can do the same thing with that by using your effects and filling it. So if I pull in my paper and I right mouse copy, now I go to this tape and I right mouse, effects, edit, add an effect, insert a blend layer, and paste. Now once I do that, I can change my opacity if I need to. And you can see that that got lighter. It picks up the color that I pasted in there. And you might just need to play with the opacity back and forth until it gets exactly the way you want it to be. But that's exactly how you fill it and you maintain that textury look of it. Have fun with this. I know that Anna would love to see any of the pages that you make with the templates, and you can find her on Facebook or at O Scraps. Take care.